Well, things just got worse for FIFA. Banks in Switzerland recently reporting 53 possible acts of money laundering in the probe of FIFA's 2018 and 2022 World Cup bids. Now, for a closer look at these investigations and economic perspective, we're joined on set by Sam Chester of investment firm Clarity Capital. Thank you so much for being with us today. It's a pleasure. So what are the economic consequences of these probes? Well, I would start by, let's take a step back and realize the economic reach of, uh, of FIFA. We're talking about an agency which is, in many ways, you can compare it almost to the World Bank, except unlike the World Bank, it also more or less dominates a particular economic sector, you know, football or, or soccer in that sense. Uh, and the other area they have to understand is that it's, it's, it's often applied around the world in countries where the rule of law and corruption are particularly egregious. So if you look at the areas where the World Cup has been hosted in the last few years, you're talking about South Africa, Russia in 2018, Qatar in 2022. So those are why you sort of see this convergence of power, economic and political power, and also areas where, you know, the rule of law is very weak. But you asked about economic impact, and I would identify four areas in particular. Um, the very first one is looking at the sponsors. FIFA has brought in over the last four or five years billions and billions of dollars. It, it's dependent upon its sponsors in order to exist in its organization. Those sponsors are now coming under intense heat. They're putting intense heat on FIFA. We saw Visa recently has threatened to pull its sponsorship and others are sure to follow. So sponsors is one area that's very interesting. I would just maybe add one last thing to that. If you think back a few years ago when Tiger Woods came under investigation for some of his sexual improprieties, uh, research shows that companies who were sponsoring him, who then all canceled Sold, they lost market capitalization of up to $10 billion. So that sort of shows the scope of damage on the sponsorship side. Very briefly, beyond sponsorship, I would say we have the area of the banking system. The money that was laundered ran through the U.S. banking system and other areas as well that we can discuss. Indeed, these are huge liabilities for corporations, but staying on the U.S. front, mm -hmm. which actually was the first to initiate these investigations, do you think that they're potentially going to look into other uh, global bodies that, that cover sports? Uh, for sure. So I guess I would put it in two ways. One, there's, the, again, the issue of the U.S. banks. Many of the U.S. banks are already being discussed. None of them have been indicted yet, but J.P. Morgan, USBC, others, they're already under early investigation by the U.S. justice system for improprieties, and that's a serious concern for them that could be worth billions of dollars in fines. But in terms of other sports organizations, let's remember 10, 15 years ago when the Olympics came under scrutiny for the bribery scandals involved in 2002, the Salt Lake City Olympic Games. Uh, the Olympics, fortunately, did clean up their act, and after firing and making many people resign, ultimately turned a corner. FIFA doesn't seem like they're prepared to follow in the Olympics example. Um, well, you mentioned the banks here. I mean, do you think that they really didn't know what the purpose of these transfers were? So th that's what they're being accused of. No one is suggesting that the banks were directly involved in the money laundering, per se. But at the same time, banks can be held... Uh, accountable if they more or less kind of look the other way and if they don't scrutinize it enough. And that's something which banks just a few weeks ago have paid billions of dollars in fines to the U.S. Uh, justice system. Let's remember the U.S. financial system is of such scope that it can hold uh, companies and banks responsible even if they have no, even if they don't sit in the U.S. and even if they don't directly do business in the U.S. And that's sort of the power and the breadth of the U.S. system. Right. Well, how will this impact the financial markets? It's a great question. On the one hand, you would think, well, this is something happening in the sports world, perhaps, and maybe in the sponsoring world, but how will it really impact markets? The one direct way will be the sponsoring companies. As I, as I mentioned earlier, companies can lose millions and billions even of dollars if they're tied into a scandal, so they're going to already hedge away. The second area, though, of course, is Qatar. Qatar is a country that, when it won the 2022 World Cup, was seen with a lot of scrutiny. How could a country of such small size, a desert country, host an event in the middle of the summer? Uh, already in the days after the arrests of the senior FIFA officials, Qatar's uh, stock market, its ETF fund, both fell by several, several market points. And with the country of Qatar having invested I think up to $200 billion for the World Cup Games in 2022, if they lose the games, it could have severe repercussions on their banking sector, on the real estate sector, and other areas as well. Indeed. Well, we will be looking eagerly for that. Thank you so much for joining us. We do appreciate it very much. It's a pleasure.